Dictators are some of the most ruthless, feared, and in many cases, truly weird people. These are the 50 most insane facts about dictators from the past and present. Number 50. That's a lot of iron boots. Once upon a time, almost every country was ruled by a dictator of some sort, be it a king or a military strongman. But today, democracy rules the world. Or does it? Dictators are still surprisingly common today, with the World Democracy Index estimating that 52 countries still have dictators. The vast majority of these, 48, are either in Africa or Asia. They're joined by Cuba, Nicaragua, Venezuela, and Belarus. Of course, this doesn't take into consideration that other countries have democratically elected leaders who may consider the rule of law a strong suggestion and are on the verge of stepping over the line. And some countries have leaders who really like to tread on that line. Number 49. Your favorite dictator? There's no question that El Salvador's Nayib Bukele is a bizarre man. The country's first millennial president, he was democratically elected, but has been trying to turn the country into his own cult of personality ever since. Be it making the volatile cryptocurrency Bitcoin one of the country's official currencies, or deploying the military to ruthlessly stamp out crime in the small Latin American country, he rarely takes into account public opinion. But as he consolidates power, more and more people are saying he's acting a lot like a dictator, which briefly led the eccentric president changing his Twitter bio to the coolest dictator in the world. But he's not the most eccentric dictator in the world. Number 48. The Mercurial Madman Most people wouldn't be able to point to Tajikistan on a map. Even fewer know about its dictator Imamali Rahman, a man with an infamous reputation. He's on his 31st year of ruling the Central Asian nation as an absolute dictator and is known for his bizarre edicts. Sometimes they work in people's favor, like when he ordered the government to find a wife for a teacher who gave a speech praising him, but more often than not, he's terrorizing the population. When a dissident was arrested on treason charges, Rahman claimed that he was plotting to target him, a plot that began when the man was seven years old. And when a video of Rahman drunkenly singing karaoke was uploaded to YouTube, the popular video-sharing platform was permanently banned in Tajikistan. And sometimes being a dictator lets you get away with a lot of personal failings. Number 47. It's good to be the king. The head of the Swazi royal family, Maswati III, made headlines worldwide when he changed the country's name from the colonial Swaziland to Eswatini. But some people probably wished he would get more attention for some other things. The king of Eswatini since 1986, when he took office at only 18, is infamous for liking the finer things in life. He maintains a lavish lifestyle, spending millions each year on sports cars and other luxuries. All the while, his country sits somewhere along the 10 poorest on the planet. And it's not just cars he likes to collect. Maswati III currently has 15 wives and has encouraged the practice of polygamy. And if people have complaints, well, good luck getting them to this absolute monarch. If there's one thing dictators typically have in common, it's ego. Number 46. Required Reading Sopanrat Niazo was another obscure but infamous dictator, ruling Turkmenistan as a Soviet appointee and then as an absolute dictator once the country gained independence until his death in 2006. Known as a despot with a cult of personality around him, he was particularly proud of his autobiography, The Runama, part state propaganda, part self-aggrandizing myth. The book was required reading for all schools, and government employees were tested on it when they applied for a job. It was even included as a part of the country's driving exam, but that still wasn't enough for Niazo. So, in 2005, he had the book launched into space in a capsule with the hopes that aliens would find it and hear about his greatness. And sometimes all it takes is being less bad than the last guy. Number 45. The Good Dictator? Equatorial Guinea had just gained independence in 1968, and the former Spanish colony was ready to hold its first free election. The winner was Francisco Macias Nagema, and he made sure he wouldn't have to win another election. He took over all the government power, instituted harsh laws that punished criticism of his administration with 30 years in prison, and started targeting the educated. He even made a bizarre law that anyone who wore glasses was to be killed. After impoverishing the nation and killing or driving into exile most of the population, he was overthrown by his nephew, Tuteo Obiang Nukema, who has successfully ruled the country as a dictator for over 40 years and is largely unchallenged because, hey, it could be worse. And sometimes dictators come from the humblest of beginnings. Number 44. The Jailbird Charles Taylor spent six years as the dictator of Liberia, winning power in a coup and becoming the glorified warlord. He was accused of crimes against humanity due to his involvement in the Sierra Leone Civil War and was ultimately sentenced to 50 years in prison at The Hague in 2012. 
but it wouldn't be a dramatic change for the former dictator. Before he became the president of Liberia, he had spent time in a Massachusetts prison for embezzlement. He was awaiting trial when he and several other inmates sawed through the bars, climbed out of the prison and escaped to Liberia, where he would cause no small amount of chaos. And this next dictator took Be Prepared to the next level. Number 43. The Bunker Man During the Cold War, everyone was a little paranoid about the threat of nuclear annihilation. That included the many countries in the Soviet sphere, who knew that one wrong move by the boss man could result in a nuclear exchange with the United States. The dictator of Albania, Enver Hoxha, wasn't taking any chances. During his 40-year reign from 1944 to 1985, he had one infrastructure project he kept going back to, bunkers, and lots of them. Albania built almost a million bunkers, one for every three people in the present-day Albania. As the Cold War ended, many of them were converted to homeless shelters, and hopefully they won't be needed for anything else. He wasn't the only communist dictator to make some bizarre choices. Number 42. Not Fun and Games Few dictators in Eastern Europe were more feared and corrupt than Nicolae Ceausescu. The Soviet-aligned Romanian dictator was known for his cruelly repressive policies and his heavy meddling into the lives of the average citizen, with his secret police being even more invasive and oppressive than their other Soviet counterparts. And like many communist leaders, he ruthlessly persecuted intellectuals. This meant bad things for professors and writers, but it was also bad news for board game lovers. Ceausescu banned the game of Scrabble in 1989 because he found it to be too intellectual and a subversive evil that left fans with little to do besides play cards and plot to overthrow the dictator, which happened before the end of the year. He wasn't the only famous dictator to meet a similar end. Number 41. On Display when a dictator is absolute, there's usually only one way to remove them, and that's something that Benito Mussolini found out the hard way near the end of World War II. An ally of Hitler and the often forgotten third pillar of the Axis powers, Mussolini was a cruel fascist and known for his persecution of socialists in his country. As the Allies gained ground and Italy switched sides in the war, Mussolini made an attempt to flee to Switzerland, but was captured by communist rebels and treated to an impromptu firing squad the next day. The partisans wanted everyone to know about their victory, so Mussolini's body was hung upside down on display, an even more undignified end than his buddy in the bunker. But not all dictators meet the same fate. Number 40. Last Fascist Standing Europe had three fascist leaders during World War II, Hitler, Mussolini, and Spanish military dictator Francisco Franco, who chose to stay out of the war. Because of his relative neutrality, when the Axis powers were defeated, Franco was allowed to stay in power, which he did for another 30 years. And while Franco was a brutal dictator who murdered his political enemies and repressed socialist movements, he maintained a good reputation with his citizens. In his final years, he restored the monarchy and reduced his powers due to his old age, passing away in 1975 and being given a state funeral. In the aftermath of 35 years of dictatorship, many Spaniards still spoke fondly about him. After all, the obedient likely didn't suffer under him, and those who were against him likely weren't around to talk about it. But another dictator had an even stranger last act. Number 39. The Artful Dodger Augusto Pinochet, the military dictator of Chile, began his career in an unusual way, taking control of Chile through a US-backed military coup against the just-elected socialist president. He would never quite consider himself a dictatorship, maintaining the facade of a democracy over his 17-year rule. This meant holding elections and constitutional referendums even as his strongmen threw his enemies out of helicopters. He was ultimately defeated in a 1988 referendum, briefly attempted to stage a coup, and was turned away by his own military regime. In the aftermath, he was indicted for crimes against humanity and even briefly arrested in Great Britain to face international charges, but would be released on medical grounds and returned to Chile where he would die a free man. We do have to make something clear though, there is nothing more dangerous to a dictator than ridicule. Number 38. Big Money Robert Mugabe took control of Zimbabwe in the aftermath of the country gaining independence and ruled it for almost 40 years, while his decolonization efforts, including seizing white-owned farms, were praised by some fellow socialists, his repressive policies soon made him a lot of enemies. Under his tenure, Zimbabwe saw massive inflation to the point that ridiculous denominations of currency had to be issued. Mugabe did not like people talking negatively about him, so he issued heavy taxes on an opposition newspaper to try to shut it down. The publisher retaliated by releasing negative ads against Mugabe printed on trillion-dollar bills. Of course, some dictators are impossible to embarrass. Number 37. The Good Time Dictator 
Ahmed Sukarno was the first president of Indonesia after it gained independence and didn't waste any time instituting an autocratic system. During his rule of Indonesia, he was a key player in the Cold War and was bringing the country closer to the Soviet Union. The USSR tried to take advantage of Sukarno's known weaknesses for women by luring him into compromising positions with Russian women and threatening him with footage, but he wasn't concerned, instead asking for more copies so he could show everyone back home and impress them with his skills in the bedroom. And some dictators come from unusual backgrounds. Number 36. The Bad Doctor When Bashar al-Assad took over as president of Syria from his father Hafez, many hoped the son would be better for the country than his father. After all, he was an educated ophthalmologist who had been working in London. When his older brother died and his father eventually followed, Bashar headed to Syria to start ruling the country and proceeded to be even more ruthless than his father. The cruel leader saw his country collapse into a brutal civil war which still rages today. He's become infamous for his chemical weapons attacks and other atrocities against civilians. That's got to violate the Hippocratic Oath. Dictators are often petty, but few of them take it to the level of this guy. Number 35. The Libya-Switzerland Cold War In July 2008, Swiss police officials raided a hotel room and arrested two Libyan citizens for assaulting their servants. This was a routine affair, except the man arrested was the son of Libyan dictator Muammar al-Gaddafi. The infamous leader retaliated by arresting two Swiss businessmen on trumped-up charges and holding them indefinitely. It caused a prolonged standoff between the two countries which escalated when Gaddafi called for the dissolution of Switzerland at the G8 summit. While it was an absurd request, the tension nearly provoked a war when Libyan forces almost invaded the Swiss embassy. And some of these dictators are so out there that they need more than one entry. Number 34. The Pen Pal Manuel Noriega was an infamous Panamanian military leader and dictator who had built a fortune through drug trafficking. Under him, Panama had descended into a corrupt autocratic regime, and his long-standing ties to America had fallen apart with one exception. There was one American he was still close to, a young girl from Michigan named Sarah York, who became his pen pal in the 1980s. The girl even visited Panama with her parents to meet her long-distance friend about a year before the US would invade Panama and remove Noriega from power. But that wasn't the end of his story. Number 33. An Unlikely Haven After Noriega was removed from power, he decided that he wasn't going to go quietly. He fled from the presidential palace and took refuge in one of the only places in the world that would welcome him, the Vatican Embassy. This tiny country is doggedly neutral in international affairs, especially in countries where it wants to keep the church in good standing. So Noriega was hiding out in the embassy, but the US was determined to smoke him out. So they used an unusual tactic, blasting loud rock music for over a week until Noriega surrendered. He was taken as a prisoner of war and would eventually be returned to Panama to answer for his crimes. He was tried and put in prison where he died in 2017. But no dictator annoyed the US as much as this one. Number 32. The Cuban Revolutionary The cigar-chomping communist dictator Fidel Castro was one of the most iconic figures of the Cold War, known to Americans as the mad enemy of the US who helped provoke the Cuban Missile Crisis. But less than a decade earlier, he was an American hero. The Cuban revolutionary who toppled dictator Fulgencio Batista was interviewed by top American journalists and even met with variety host Ed Sullivan, who compared him to George Washington. Of course, this was before Castro declared himself a Marxist and would spend the next few decades sparring with one US president after another, and that would lead to some interesting scenarios. Number 31. Assassination Nation the United States spent years trying to assassinate Castro, with one Cuban official claiming they had uncovered 634 attempts to kill the Cuban autocrat. Most of them used standard tactics, but other attempts preyed on Castro's specific vulnerabilities. He was fond of cigars, so there were plans to either poison his cigars or rig them with explosives. They also knew he was a frequent scuba diver, so plans were drawn up to taint his wetsuit with lethal viruses. But none of these tactics came to fruition and the Cuban leader would spend over 50 years as president of Cuba. But it all could have gone very differently. Number 30. The Autocrat Sportsman There was a rumor going around that Castro was a very skilled baseball player, classed as a Cuban pitcher phenom, which made people ask, could his reign have been averted with a major league tryout? While rumors of Castro having the world's fastest fastball might have been exaggerated, he actually was a talented pitcher who appeared in a minor league baseball game in July 1959 only a short time before he would become dictator. We're guessing that anyone who played him after would have let him win. After all, the most dangerous part of a dictator is their ego. 
If you grew up in the 90s, odds are you've heard of this infamous dictator. Number 29. Brush your teeth. Chairman Mao was well known for having some strange ideas and habits when it came to dental hygiene. The communist dictator never flossed or brushed his teeth. Instead, he would just rinse his mouth with tea, famously declaring a tiger never brushes his teeth, why are a tiger's teeth so sharp? Mao's close circle would always secretly complain about his breath. His general dental hygiene was so bad that one of his doctors described his teeth as looking like they were painted green, while his gums were also infected, leading to his trademark bad breath. Number 28. The Literate Dictator? Saddam Hussein became infamous for many reasons, including chemical weapons attacks and the invasion of Kuwait, which led to the Persian Gulf War. But in his early years as Ba'ath Party vice chairman, he was in charge of Iraq's literacy program, and it went so well that he gained the attention of the United Nations. He received an award from UNESCO for his literacy program, as well as for his public health system. The next time he'd be in the news, it would be for seizing power in 1979, and history would not wind up talking about his literacy program in the future, and he was infamously bizarre at times. Number 27. The Blood Oath Saddam was known for being eccentric, and he wasn't a particularly religious Muslim. The use of blood is restricted in Islam, especially in religious rites, but that didn't stop Saddam from commissioning a famous calligrapher to write the Quran with Saddam's own blood. He commissioned it on his 60th birthday and it reportedly took two years and 50 pints of blood to complete the whole thing. Experts say it may have taken nine years of planned blood donations to get enough blood safely, which is why some suspect that the entire thing might have been a bizarre embellishment, but the supposed blood Quran was studied extensively. And even stranger, his downfall could have all been a big misunderstanding. Number 26. The Beginning of the End The decision of Sodom to invade Kuwait would ultimately spell his end, as he would be defeated and then make an attempt to assassinate former President Bush in the aftermath. This would create a long-standing grudge that would end when Bush's son invaded Iraq a decade later and deposed Saddam, leading to his execution. And it all might have happened because Saddam thought he had the green light to invade Kuwait. During a discussion with the U.S. ambassador, Saddam set out conditions under which he would invade Kuwait, and the ambassador reportedly told Saddam the U.S. was not interested in a trade war. This was likely just diplomacy, but Saddam took it as the go-ahead for his invasion, and the rest is history. Now let's look at some of the most infamous dictators of all time. Number 25. The Image of a Dictator Joseph Stalin was the second dictator of the USSR, and he was infamous for taking the country's communist policies much further than his predecessor Lenin. He also encouraged a cult of personality to crop up around him, going so far as to make it a crime to shoot at images of either him or Lenin. As it turns out, this worked against him when prisoners in Stalin's many, many gulags began getting tattoos of Stalin and Lenin in the hope that when it came time for another round of mass executions, they would be spared, as the executioners wouldn't want to commit the grave crime of shooting at a picture of one of their great leaders. Stalin probably wouldn't have cared if it meant getting rid of political dissidents, but to be fair to him, he didn't really care about anyone, not even his son. Number 24. The Lost Son under Stalin's rule, equality was key, at least that was how he presented it. Whatever the reason, Stalin's oldest son, who he had a troubled relationship with, was serving on the front lines of World War II like any other soldier when he was captured by the Nazis. The Nazis thought they had the bargaining chip they needed to get one of their prominent field marshals back. They informed Stalin they had his son, and the Soviet dictator's response was, I will not exchange a marshal for a lieutenant. The negotiations broke down, Stalin's son went to a Nazi prison camp and would eventually be executed in 1943. Stalin was hard to predict and that meant everyone around him lived in fear. Number 23. Quiet! Stalin was a notoriously private man and his bedchambers were his personal sanctum. No one was allowed to enter them, even his closest guards. He reportedly once tested this in a particularly sadistic way, testing his guards by screaming in pain from behind the door. The guards naturally rushed in to rescue their leader, disregarding the under no circumstances that Stalin had issued. Their reward for their concern was a hasty execution, and all the other guards quickly learned that when Stalin issues an order, you'd better follow it to the letter. And that may have spelled Stalin's end. Number 22. An Ironic Last Act Stalin's end would come in 1953. He was already in ill health, but one night, while alone in his room, he suffered a seizure and collapsed. His guards heard the commotion inside the room, but they all remembered what had happened to the last guard who wanted to help Stalin. This could be another test and they were not risking it, so they waited several hours until the next day, when they found him collapsed on the floor in a puddle of his own urine. He had suffered a cerebral hemorrhage and severe brain damage. 
Even though he was given the best care in the country, it was a little too late. He died three days later, a particularly undignified end to the brutal dictator's life. But he wasn't the only infamous communist dictator from the era. Number 21. The All-Time Champ Hitler and Stalin are definitely the two most infamous dictators of all time, but neither may be the most murderous one. That honor goes to Mao Zedong, the Chinese communist leader who took control of the country after a bloody civil war. Among his reforms was the agricultural revolution that caused a massive famine, putting food production in the hands of bureaucrats who mismanaged the farms and forced many educated individuals into farming jobs they were unprepared for. The result was the staggering death of at least 40 million people and maybe as many as 70 million, a death toll that dwarfs any of his rivals. But he had an ego that led him to do bizarre things. Number 20. Well, that's gross. Chairman Mao was an absolute dictator who answered to no one, including his dentist. He had a bizarre habit of not brushing his teeth, instead simply washing his mouth out with tea and chewing the leaves. Needless to say, this wasn't sanitary, and anyone around him could tell. First his teeth yellowed, then they started rotting and falling out. His gums also became seriously infected, but when his dentist encouraged him to brush, Mao simply responded, does a tiger brush his teeth? The dentist wasn't going to risk his neck and say otherwise, and hey, it was the dictator's teeth, not his. And he had some questionable ideas when it came to ruling his country. Number 19. Get out of here! Mao plunged China into poverty as the massive economic struggles in his last years led him to consider an extreme solution. It was time to get rid of 10 million unnecessary citizens who were all women. He proposed sending this massive group to the United States since the country was too poor to sustain what he deemed as an excessive number of women. While the plan never happened, it was part of a larger pattern of undervaluing women that would lead to the one-child policy and a shortage of women that is undermining China's population growth to this day and may result in a demographic time bomb that's getting close to exploding. Mao was also notoriously petty. Number 18. Dishonored Guest Although China and the USSR were natural allies against the US, they didn't always get along, and Mao felt humiliated by Stalin during his first visit to the Soviet Union. After being treated as a generic guest and not an equal, Mao held a grudge. And when Stalin's successor Nikita Khrushchev visited years later, Mao placed him in an unair conditioned room during a stifling Beijing summer. To make things worse, he insisted the meeting between the two leaders being held in a swimming pool. The only problem with this, Khrushchev couldn't swim. The alliance between the two leaders was off to a terrible start. Of course, one historic dictator was more infamous than any other. Number 17. The Disgruntled Artist Everyone knows Adolf Hitler was an aspiring artist whose career never took off, which led to his pivot to politics. But most historians today believe he was a mediocre artist, which makes many of the memes about him a little inaccurate. He was rejected twice from his chosen school, but he would get his revenge. He applied to the Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna, which was famously progressive, and when Hitler took over Austria in the beginning days of World War II, he would gain control of the school quickly and force it to conform to Nazi standards. And it wasn't the only area where he was prone to excess. Number 16. Hitler the Plutocrat In most forms of media, Hitler's portrayed as a stark, ruthless, and humorless man. He certainly had the traits of a genocidal dictator, but he also had a taste for the finer things in life and he reportedly amassed a fortune of several billion dollars, much of it looted from the victims and from the economies of countries he invaded. And as soon as the money came in, he spent it on luxuries like high-end cars and champagne. While he portrayed himself as a man of the people and often asked the German public to sacrifice some luxuries for the good of the nation, he was living like a king. And while he would eventually go to war with the United States, he didn't necessarily hate everything about it. Number 15. He's a fan. The years leading up to World War II were also a golden age for Hollywood, and Hitler was keeping up to date with the innovations coming out of California. He was reportedly a fan of one filmmaker in particular, Walt Disney, as the innovative animator stunned him with his first feature film, Snow White. And while Hitler might have been a fan of some American things, they returned the favor. In the years before America joined the war, there was a strong pro-Nazi movement called the German-American Bund in the United States that viewed the US and the Nazis as natural allies. That was until Pearl Harbor put an end to that pipe dream. Hitler was also a very lucky guy, dodging death a couple of times. Number 14. A Lucky Escape Hitler had a cult of personality around him, but not everyone in his inner circle loved him. 
He was increasingly seen as insane and dangerous, and his obsession with exterminating Jewish people was sabotaging the war effort. That led to several high-ranking military officials plotting to kill him with an explosive device at a meeting. The bomb was placed and everything went off without a hitch, except that day Hitler had switched seats and the bomb only winged him. Naturally, the conspirators all met their end as a result, and the war continued on until Hitler led Germany to an inevitable defeat. But today's dictators are no less bizarre than their historical counterparts. Number 13. From Humble Roots Xi Jinping is current leader of China and has just been named president for life in a unanimous vote by the party brass. But he did not come from leadership stock. In fact, his entire family might have been on the outs. His father was China's vice premier under Mao, but was seen as a reformer and was quickly forced out. Not only did he lose his position, but he was demoted to a field laborer and even lived in a cave at one point. This gave Xi Jinping a close connection to the farming community, which led him to visiting Iowa in 1985. Xi is not really focused on farming anymore. Instead, he's determined to expand China's territory, even where there isn't any. Number 12. From the Ground Up one of the defining parts of Xi's tenure has been China's aggression in the South China Sea. The country has been encroaching on international waters and even on other countries' territorial waters, claiming the entire South China Sea belongs to them by divine right. They've been asserting those rights with land-building projects on the waters of the sea, creating artificial islands out of sand dunes. But they're doing much more than just building sand dunes and planting flags. Many of these islands have military bases on them, and future plans indicate they might be planning to turn some of them into tourist destinations. And at least in one area, she has liberalized China out of necessity. Number 11. Let's go baby! China's one-child policy, which severely punished families that had more than one child, was an attempt by past Chinese governments to reduce overpopulation. It worked. A little too well. China is now facing a massive demographic crisis with too few women in a rapidly aging population. So, the one-child policy was repealed entirely over the last years, and now the government is actively offering incentives to have more children. But old habits die hard, and most Chinese families are still hesitant to have large families, leading China's demographic problem to look more and more ominous. But despite being seen as a more sober dictator than many of his fellows, he's still known for being petty. Number 10. Oh, poo. In 2013, Xi Jinping visited the US and was photographed standing next to President Obama. The picture featured short, portly Xi next to the tall, lanky Obama, and some snarky Chinese meme artists compared it to an image of Winnie the Pooh and Tigger. Xi did not find it funny, and attempts to shut down the comparison only led to more memes being made. Finally, the government banned the character of Winnie the Pooh from China completely, because, as we all know, when the government tells people to stop making memes, they definitely do it. China's relationship with Disney has suffered in the years since. No word if that's linked to Poogate. But as temperamental as she is, he doesn't compare to another dictator up north. Number 9. It's good to be Vlad. Vladimir Putin is definitely the most notorious dictator in the world right now, mostly owing to his brutal invasion of Ukraine. But while he presents himself as a stark military dictator, he actually has a taste for the finer things in life. While Putin is notoriously secretive about his wealth, it's believed he has a fortune of around $200 billion and might be one of the wealthiest men in the world. Putin claims his salary is only just over $100,000 a year, but being friendly with oligarchs and having shares in Russian industry gives him many opportunities to pad his pockets. And when you can't earn something, just steal it. Number 8. That's… not super. Did Vladimir Putin really steal a Super Bowl ring? If you ask Robert Kraft, then yes. The controversial Patriots owner visited Russia in 2005, back when Putin was still an internationally respected Russian president. He showed Putin the latest Super Bowl ring that the Patriots had won. Putin looked it over and then proceeded to put it in his pocket and walk away. It turned into an international affair, but the ring is still reportedly in Putin's possession. Kraft eventually gave up on getting the ring back when he was informed that it would probably be in his best interest to just let Putin keep it. Because when Putin wants to get you, there is nowhere you can hide. Number 7. A Taste of Poison If you're a dictator, you can usually hurt anyone you want as long as they're in your country. But Putin has been getting increasingly aggressive about reaching out and touching his enemies with poison wherever they might be. First, a notorious defector from the Putin regime was fatally poisoned with polonium and died not long afterward. Then another enemy of his was poisoned along with his daughter, but they both survived. Everyone knows who's doing it, but they have no way of reaching him and making him pay. But Putin has lots of enemies, and he acts accordingly. Number 6. Properly Paranoid In many ways, Putin acts like a medieval king. 
right down to having a food taster check his food before he eats it. But in recent months, he's become more secretive and paranoid than ever. Knowing even many of his top military officials oppose the war in Ukraine, Putin is taking absolutely no chances. He's even reportedly lengthened the tables at meetings to absurd lengths, ensuring that no one can come close enough to kill him. And with Russia being next to impossible to get information out of, seeing him in public is becoming rarer and rarer. But the title of the most bizarre dictator of the modern era can only go to one man. Number 5. Like Father Kim Jong-un is the third member of the Kim dynasty to rule North Korea since the communist takeover, and he may be the most volatile of the three. But he wanted to make sure he would follow in the footsteps of his famous grandfather more than anyone, even undergoing plastic surgery to look more like him. It's another example of the cult of personality that surrounds the Kim family, the country where those who don't cry properly on the anniversary of the elder Kim's death could be sent away to labor camps. And even haircuts are regulated in North Korea. Number 4. Making the Cut In North Korea, only certain haircuts are approved for men, and you'd better not be caught in public with the wrong one. But in 2017, only 15 haircuts were approved, and for the first time, Kim Jong-un's distinctive do was not included in the list. It was made off-limits to commoners, because you've got to earn that famous flat top. But it seems the rule doesn't apply to tourists, as in the same year that those reports started to come out, two journalists made the trip to North Korea just to get a haircut and no one's sure who's next in line. Number 3. Father Knows Best Kim Jong-un's family is kept as closely under wraps as everything else about him, but it's believed that he has three children. The oldest boy, who's never seen in public unlike his younger sister, the young girl is often seen accompanying her father on missile inspections and other public events. This has raised speculation that she might be the next leader of North Korea, a massive change from the country's recent history of only male leaders. But Kim Jong-un is in poor health and this could become relevant sooner than later. And if that daddy's little girl is next in line, odds are no one could stop Kim Jong-un from making that official. But in some ways, it's good to be the man on top. Number 2. The Star Maker North Korea is notoriously secretive and has diplomatic relations with only select countries, but that hasn't stopped Kim Jong-un from bringing in some culture. He reportedly loves K-pop music, even though it's made by their traitorous brothers south of the border. So he's reportedly assembled his own all-girl pop band called the Moranbong Band, which he handpicked himself. But if you're expecting jaunty pop tunes about boys, think again. The band reportedly has song titles like Do Prosper Era of the Workers' Party, but all these dictators have one thing in common. Number 1. Scot Free Dictators usually meet their end either at the hands of a coup or at the hands of nature. What doesn't usually happen to them is facing trial. Only a select few world leaders have ever faced an international tribunal at The Hague, and the vast majority of those who have were African leaders. Why does this happen? Is The Hague biased? No, it's actually just the way the law works. The Hague doesn't have the capacity to arrest a foreign leader, so the only way a world leader sees the courtroom is if the country hands them over, and that will usually only happen when the next leader wants to get rid of the old one. So for most dictators, the long arm of the law won't come calling. Want to know about possibly the most deranged dictator of all time? Check out World's Most Murderous Dictator, Pol Pot, or watch this video instead.